Welcome to Switcher Chats, music interviews brought to you by Music Matters with Daryl Craig Harris and Music Tribes Unite. Bennett, how are you doing? Daryl, bro, I'm very good. I'm very happy to be uh, talking to you today, man. So you have an awesome band. It's, it's a trio, actually, the Trouble Notes. You guys are viral. They have had 100 over 100 million views of your your videos um lots going on you're actually right now you're coming to us from belgium correct that's correct yeah in this little makeshift studio tell me the story about that studio because we were just talking about that before we started yeah man so so a few years ago um we first started getting invited to come to this place called kotrik it's uh, at the very south uh, west of Belgium, near the French border, in awesome. like the, the Flemish region, in uh, West Flanders. And so uh, we were coming here because there was a lot of uh, immigrants that we knew that were coming from South America, different parts of Europe, mm. and uh, and they were they're all artists. They started to build this collective, and we were like, yeah, uh, our manager Stephanie, who is an absolute peach, she's like the master connector, and she. Uh, she brought us all here, you know, we were, we were meeting and talking and then we started to pick up on a vibe like, Hey, something really creative is happening here. And kind of like within a week of talking to people, we got connected to the conservatory and they were like, yeah, um, we have a, an old radio station upstairs. That's completely empty. Uh, it also doesn't have the greatest, uh, like, uh, video lights, but that's for another day. We'll fix that. Eventually. We, 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 made, we made it work. <laughs> we make it work, man. But so they were like, yeah, here's the key. Um, there's a, there's just a stage box in the wall. You can set it up however you want and go for it. And so we were like, yep, uh, nothing can happen right now because of, uh, Corona. So we're going there. We're bringing all of our own equipment and we're recording an album. So well, how, how awesome is that? <laughs> It is, uh, like I said, I feel like I've waited seven years for such a dream, yeah? Like, it, it's a great sounding room. It's really dry. There's, like, a super well isolated. And, yeah, we've got our little uh, control room set up, and, and everything's cooking. Yeah, so, that's awesome, man. Yeah, and it's, it's also Belgium is a nice hang. And you, you have great great people, great food. What, what, you know, what, what else could you ask for? <laughs> it's really, you're exactly right. And I really like this area, too, because it's a, a convergence of a lot of different uh, influences and nuances because like north of France is only about 20 minutes and then you've got like the Flemish thing and and the Netherlands is not far so there's a lot of throughway here uh, and different people kind of connecting and I think it's just it's magic it's great yeah. creative for us and exciting it's exciting too because of the nature of your band you guys are kind of all from different places so you're actually you're originally from Chicago Although I hear yes. an accent. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you know, I get back into it when I'm there, yeah? So then I get that uh, Chicago thing back. But, uh, you know, it's, I guess it's the music. I don't know. But, like, my I'm, my accent is always moving. Huh? It's, it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's fluctuating, That's, which is not a bad thing. So that, tell that me, is tell, so the Trouble Notes, tell me the story. How did you guys get together? I love what you do. It's sort of, how would you classify your vibe? Like, it's like world music, but it's a lot of stuff, right? Fusion and... Yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a good, you know, we're, we're kind of a crossover, like we, we say now that we kind of make like, uh, we're somewhere between folk and acoustic dance music, so it's kind mm -hmm. of like there's EDM and we're ADM, because we do a lot of like really dancey tribal dance kind of music, but right. with, yep. with all acoustic instruments, so there's no machines, uh, although we've been dabbling with some some toys on for this album, but it's it's kind of a juxtaposition of like the raw acoustic and really like kind of modern songwriting uh as well as modern technology yeah so we kind of try to bridge the two and and feel that we're flexible to kind of be in both worlds at times yeah. how did you guys how did you guys originally meet up what, what's the story of how you came together yes yeah, so the, the band technically started in new york city uh in man uh yeah back in 2012 and then at that time i was kind of working a, i had a different life so i was doing financial stuff Ah, fun. Um, yeah, yeah, it was great. Let me tell you, I really enjoyed it. Although, although it's good to have that background when you're a musician. That is also true. That's true, especially if you want to yeah. stay independent, because you kind of understand right. like the, how to work the game a little bit, so to speak, uh, which yep. helps. And so, with that in mind, you know, I had that background, and I was young. I was in my early twenties, and I was kind of like, "Hey, do I want to sit behind an office desk for my entire twenties, or do I want to go out and have an adventure?" And so that was kind of where the birth of the band was formed was 
traveling, it, you know, trying to pick up as many influences as possible, really bring and bridge like a lot of cultures together. And I just met two kindred spirits along the path, basically. Yeah, uh, it's funny, it's so, funny how the universe, the universe sort of works, like it brings certain people together. And you're so lucky if, if you're able to hold that together for so long. As a band, it's challenging, right? Super. Yeah. And I think that's a credit to, to not just maybe myself, but really to the other two as well, is that like that we've just kind of stayed strong with our common sacrifice, you know, knowing that we really want this, that we really believe in the the music, we believe in also the way that it makes other people feel and the openness that we've been kind of uh, experienced throughout our last seven years of playing together. I mean, we've, yeah, it's, we've it's, done- so, it's, so- it's sort of like the three musketeers, right? You're all in, in it together and you're rocking it. That's awesome. That, we try, man. We try. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, so you're, um, you're a violinist and the other gentleman is Florian on guitar, all of our percussion. Um, yeah. It's really cool because you guys all have your own vibe, but it, it gels so well together. Did you, uh, did you originally, were you doing like sc- street busking at, at the very beginning or because a lot of your videos are on the street playing to yes. folks? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that we, because the way we started and we wanted to travel, and I think a lot of musicians fought like they they have this big, a lot of musicians hit this crossroad early in their careers where they kind of to say, hey, look, you know, I've written some cool songs and now what do I do? You know, do I basically sit in my bedroom and put out video after video after video in order to get found by the right person who's then going to put me on here or there or whatever? Or are they, you know, basically say, uh we're gonna just get out there and get our hands dirty and that was kind of what we did was was just say look we're gonna create opportunities for people to hear us so whether that's online and eventually that worked uh or if it's gonna be you know in the meantime just cutting our teeth in the street it's a great way to practice it's a great way to you know kind of get your sound out there make a little bit of pocket money of course have a cool vibe and the sound started to get kind of influenced by all that too you know when we were meeting mm-hmm. different people the way so yeah and you can, yeah, I you mean, can also you, you can feel like what songs work live what doesn't what different vibes catch people right bingo yeah in fact like a lot of songs changed from where we got the inspiration and we wrote them and then we brought them to a different place and it was like okay, we're doing this and we thought it was really cool and suddenly it wasn't working. You know, where like, we were like, eh, people are walking by, they're not really feeling it. And so then one of us started to change something and, and then everybody else followed and we always kind of attribute mm-hmm. that to the, to the street. You know, that we, we say we write songs in the bedroom and then we bring them out the street to cook. Yeah, you know? that's almost like, you know, that's almost like going back to like the Grateful Dead. That's kind of what's made them really popular is because it's, you feel like you're watching a creation live where it's morphing, it's changing, and the guys are listening to each other. You feel like that 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 creates an exciting vibe for the audience? I, I mean, I, I grew up, you know, I'm not to date myself, but like I grew up <laughs> listening to a lot of, uh, of um, American jam bands, yeah? Growing up in the yeah. Midwest. And right. like, uh, Grateful Dead is like the precursor to that 90s era when they were right. all like, yeah, like yeah, wide, all wide, widespread panic. All those yeah, bands. yeah, exactly. You had all these amazing jam bands that were out there that were doing really cool things and, and they were creating live on the stage. And I was inspired by that, you know, classically trained, but thinking to myself, man, like, I don't want to play something that was written 400 years ago. I want to play something now, you know, and, yeah, and, and create, I think that be able to create. The fusion of those two worlds is kind of what inspired me, you know, it was like uh, taking skills that you learn from playing the same thing over and over in repetition, but then putting yourself in really extraordinary situations where you're forced to take those skills and make something new. And and yep. that's kind of I think, the entire vibe of that, you know, is who like- are some a, of your, um, Who are some of your influences on violin? Because you have a, a very unique style. Classical, obviously classical is not, when you grow up in that world, you're not encouraged to solo, you're not encouraged to improvise, although it's more common now. Um, but who are some I, of the guys that, that kind of really, you know, really came into your mind when you first started playing? Um, well, there was a girl, there was a, a Chicago-based girl, her name is uh, Rachel Barton. And she was one of the first ones that I saw that was- uh, I should, I should say of, guys, and, guys and girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But for sure, Rachel Barton was a, uh, she had an influence on me at a younger age. I haven't followed her so much lately, but like when I was younger and I watched her play, she was doing things that were a bit different. I really liked that. Uh, Ponty, of course, uh, Jean-Luc Ponty. Yeah. Like I think he, you know, when you start talking about the electric, 
but in a in a strange way i think that my style comes more from guitarist huh? oh, and like and listening to a lot of classic rock listening to a lot of other instruments and then trying to take that sound and tra transpose it onto a violin i think that's kind of where you know and try not to be overly influenced by what other violinists are doing but rather but what other musicians are doing you know and that's yeah. kind of how i bridge the, the gap between the two yeah i think it's it's so important to find your like you we all have our influences I'm a, I'm a bass player as well but um it's it's but it's also great like you don't want to sound exactly like Jocko. that's not a good place to go right no <laughs> no although if you get compared not a bad to Jocko, thing, but, you're in a good yeah. shape as a, yeah exactly man now i've seen videos of you playing bass you're a bad boy yeah you can uh -oh. you, you play well, really, really well. Yeah. Yeah. And, I just uh, I try to stay I just try to stay out of trouble. That's my, that's my well, angle. <laughs> I, and I stay in trouble. That's the whole point of the band. Yeah, we're the trouble. There notes, you man. go. Yeah. Uh, awesome. How, so tell me about the video thing, because your videos have gone super viral. You have over 100 million video views on different all the different outlets. Um, tell me how that came about. Like when, when did your first one really take off? Um, well, we we were doing this we were doing the street thing for a few years and always kind of pushing like using the street as a way to get people to go to our social media um and then ironically i think it was in 2016 around there that we we started to say hey look you know we're gonna see if we can act to get some of these street videos you know and produce some videos of our own and just just put them out to different content curators you know and um you know things like uh music crowns or music man or you know face on facebook and on on different right. social medias um and that was working moderately well and then the irony is is that like the one that actually went mega crazy was completely random not filmed by us and mm -hmm. we had we didn't do anything to promote it so we definitely helped our own case but like the ones that went mega viral were just putting ourselves out there in the right time and the right person seeing us you know it yeah. it took some years but but you know somebody that really vibes with you that gets that right video that captures that moment that essence that's what happened yeah, it's, it's funny like you say that because i think that that's a lot of people's stories like they do these videos they plan them all out it doesn't do much and then somebody captures them on a phone and it goes nuts right because it feels real it feels like oh this is these guys can actually really do it like instead of like having like an MTV video where you don't know if they can really do it live. <laughs> Mate, like I'm telling you, like the ones I always think are gonna pop, I'm like, oh, this is so good. The sound is great, the setting is beautiful. And it's like, oh yeah, I really like that. And then the one that's on a phone with terrible audio quality, <laughs> right. like pixelated, you know, and that's the one that gets like, you know, 50 million views and you're like, that doesn't make sense at all. Right. But it's to your point that people want that moment. They want to see this beautiful place in Europe with these musicians and they want to live there. They want to be there. They want to have that experience. And I think that's what, what happened to us, you know? And I mean, of course, like credit to us too, the song is good, but like, it's definitely the moment that really brought it all together. Right. Yeah. And the vibe. And I think, mean, like you said, in your situation too, Europe is kind of a co-star because you're, you're doing videos on some great locations. And it's like, where is that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We get that a lot. And I love that when people are like in the comments arguing about where they are. You know, like, oh, <laughs> that's this city. No, it's this one. Oh, it's this one. And, I'm just, and we just kind of sit back and they're like, yep, we're going to let people go for it. Like, you know, it's fun. Who's going to get it right? You know? Yeah. It's, it's like performing and it's like performing in a, a beautiful painting. It's, it's, it's a win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. No, for sure, for sure. It's great. No, you're right. You're right. So one thing that we're both, we're actually both involved in, because I'm also a photographer, uh, I do a lot of sports photography. And, um, and of course, you guys are doing music. So we're both um, involved in a site called Aficionados. Yes. And that's launching next week, February 7th. So tell me about it. So that's basically NFT based. So tell me about your thing with NFTs and, and what you've learned about that. Cause it's a lot, it's kind of a mystery world for a lot of folks. Well, I, I got wrapped up in the crypto world uh, about five years ago. Yeah. And, and a lot of that had to do with, uh, you know, having this finance background, blah, 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 blah. And I had always heard about Bitcoin, the boogeyman Bitcoin, you know, like as far back as, 2010 2011 even when i was in new york still working and you know everybody was kind of talking about it being this 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 hype this overblown thing blah 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 and of course you know you see the waves going the way that they were and and so i think in 2016 when things started to go mad and it suddenly hit the street so to speak and a lot of people were talking about it uh i was like okay maybe there's really something here and so i dove into 
the idea behind it. And that's what I fell in love with all the way back then. Uh, and when you, when you get into NFTs, like I, I was already talking with people back in 2017 about uh, how NFTs in particular blockchains, but particularly NFTs eventually is going to completely revolutionize the creative industry. And Dem democratizes the money, right? <laughs> Bingo. And I think, I think that's the point, you know, is just like one of the clearest ways we can talk about it. And you, I'm sure you know a lot about this is uh, in copyright. And so when you really start talking about copyright of a song, like if I write, if you and I write a song, there, right, we say, hey, Daryl and I, we wrote this banger. It's an absolute beast song. We wrote it together. We, we, we have a 50-50 split. And then normally what would happen is, is some sort of uh, uh, basically publishing company would come along and say, hey, you know, I want to collect up on your rights. I want to help promote for Stink. I want to do this and that. And as a result, I am asking for X as a puppet, right? And you sign this contract with them, you give them the song, and then basically it's kind of like you're at the will and the whim of their data to understand, number one, where is the song being played, who's, who's put it where, and conventional wisdom tells everybody in this industry that the artist gets completely screwed because there's so many times that the song gets basically played and nobody tracks it. Right. Or somebody tracks it, but you but but you don't know what the numbers are if they're real or yeah, not. Yeah, because you have no way of controlling. It's impossible. Like it's really impossible to be able to control. And and I think you know what NFTs does because it puts a digital signature on on a piece of work. You know whether it's an audio file or a visual file or whatever it might be. There's literally like a created by so and so written on it about with a cryptographic code. And right. every time that that it's picked up on the blockchain every time it registers that it's been played there would essentially be some sort of action in a smart contract that would determine what happens as a result right and you, get, you get an actual readout that's that's for real it's a non-fungible right. non-fungible token is what is what that stands for and there's a reason why why it says that like you said because you get a digital it's like a thumbprint a fingerprint Precisely. exactly yeah. in, in fact theoretically you know, you would never be able to have that if, if you had a tokenized song, for example, the, the song would theoretically could never be stolen. Theoretically, right? And I think this is where, you know, like things like Napster and all that kind of stuff, like they wouldn't have been possible if everything had been logged to a blockchain because the minute that the song was being played somewhere, the blockchain would understand that. And then yep. there would either be a, hey, this isn't allowed, boom, it's gone. Or it would be, you now owe remuneration for this artist based on this smart contract. Right. And what it, what it also does in my mind too, is it, you know, and nothing against Spotify, nothing against those streaming services, because they've actually helped all of us, even with my podcast. But, you know, there's a, there's a certain built-in, like, artists not getting royalty or fair royalties um, aspect to that. And that really helps solve that issue, right? Agreed. Agreed. Well, I think we can be, I think the open and honest conversation that's never happened with the technological revolution in music is, hey, if we say Spotify, you know, if Spotify is taking, say, 70% of the income, the ad revenues and the revenues and giving the artists 30, we, yes, theoretically, by putting our music on that platform, we've agreed to that. But at the same time, is that really fair for what's being given to us in terms of exposure, marketing, this and that? And I think that with NFTs, we're, we're basically going to reach a more decentralized point where every single person that's creating a song will basically say, hey, you know, this is the way that the compensation should be for this particular song. And it will be super clear. And I think that's where we're missing that. We're missing that right now. We're all at the whim of these three or four really massive players who are setting the market. And theoretically, if NFTs work the way that I hope it will, which is why I am super supportive of Chinatos, is you know it's really more about empowering artists and letting them have negotiating control over their work. Right, and the aficionados, which what's awesome about that. So our friend Sam from Music Crowds had contacted me and explained what they were doing. And the thing is that those guys specialize in music, they specialize in, in sports, which is what I'm doing also. And um, they they have they know that space, and that's super important because the NFT thing is still a little bit of the wild west, right? We're still yeah. kind of learning. But, but, you know, the other aspect of it is the crowdfunding aspect. Um, talk about that a little bit. 
So this for me is where I think the future is. A lot of people, when, when they first read the news and they start looking at what NFTs are, you know, it's like, oh, you can buy a piece of property in the metaverse and then you can hang a picture on the wall. You can hang with Snoop, you can hang with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, people are kind of like, yo, what is this, man? Like, let's be serious about it, right? But the point is, is like where, where I think for artists, like the way that we're going to use it already starting next month is looking at um, creating NFTs that correlate to a real world experience. So for example, you know, you could buy some sort of real experience, get an NFT and buy, and just by virtue of having that NFT, it would grant you access to uh, a members only concert or an NFT right. holders only this or that or whatever. Or like right? a, a meet, a spent the IP meet and greet or backstage, whatever. Bingo. Right? Yeah, exactly. And you know, we want to, we basically want to do that. We want to start treating NFT holders as if they're members of our Patreon community and vice versa. So if you're a member of our Patreon community, we're going to give you access to a free NFT that gives you all that access, right? That's really where we're at is just kind of branching out and giving people more opportunities to be able to do things with, with sell on value, so to speak, down the pipeline. So you have this NFT and it will have value and create value for you as a fan for years, right? And all the meanwhile, it's creating more value for us because as because you're- Another part of the NFT experience a lot of people may not realize is that every time that NFT can be resold, if, it, if it's like a piece of art or whatever, a piece of music, you get another percentage. You get a piece of, a little piece of that, which is something that doesn't really exist right now in, in, the, in the world that we live in. <laughs> so. It's very true. I mean, if, if you sold me a painting or a picture, right? And I bought your picture for 50, dollars and I had you sign it for me and I turned around and sold it to somebody for 200 I pocket the 150 you've only taken 50 bucks but yet I've taken your work and made triple what I paid for it on that's not fair right, right? Yeah. so the idea would be that you would set a contract in the with this nft that says look if you sell it on I still want 20 percent so suddenly you've made that 50 and now on top of it on the extra 150 you're getting 20 percent of that add-on sale you know, or and, the and, gross and, sale, I don't know. You know, yeah, and, 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 and it, it. right, and in, in an ethical creative space, you know, where where people who are creators are also supporting you, they realize like that's important. That's that's something that you're going to down the road when you're, you know, you can't tour anymore, or you don't want to tour anymore, you're still going to have that income, which is super important. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I this is why I see it as the future. I see it as empowering artists for exactly this reason. If you create something from the moment you create it until until the end, you know, if it changes hands, it's still your work, you know, so there's a piece of it that, you know, a piece of whatever is happening still belongs to you. And I think that's, that's important, you know. Absolutely. Hey, um, so you guys are part of the reason why you're in Belgium is because you're recording. And when's your next release coming out? Are you, are you doing, are you working on a full record or how, how are you approaching that? Second studio, man. Second studio album. So it's a big one. We're excited awesome. about it. We've been we've been we've been saving some of these songs for years, uh, and uh, and indeed, uh, the plan right now is tentative release is fall twenty twenty two. That's assuming there are no hiccups, which right now we're very much in time. So yeah, uh, awesome. but that is that is indeed the plan uh, to 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 release in the fall, and uh, we'll start dropping little things. We're gonna have a couple batch mm -hmm. NFT sales. Uh, throughout the summer to kind of fundraise for it as well uh and you know those will be connected to different songs to different pieces of history artwork that kind of thing uh but that is the the pipeline for 2022 so yeah mm -hmm. we're looking at an october november release yeah and you have actually on your schedule which people can uh, give me actually give me the name of your website just the, is it the troublenotes.com you got it yeah that's it okay. troublenotes.com that's our website uh, and we are doing uh, some touring this year already. We're we're booked for Glastonbury. We're booked for some of the bigger festivals in Europe. As right. long as they yeah, happen. I, I was I was going to say because I was looking on your on your um, site with the, the festivals, and actually you're playing the biggest ones. <laughs> so that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were you know we were like Glastonbury for us was was like the that was the gut punch because in 2020. Uh, it was the 50 years of Glastonbury. Paul McCartney was going to be the headliner, you know. And oh, it was wow. Just like, 
no, you know? So <laughs> yeah, sadly we, for everybody, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, we got Billie Eilish. I like Billie Eilish, you know, so like I'll, I'll take it. I think Paul's going to probably end up there. Hopefully, I don't know, but, but you know, the fact that we're also going to be there finally after it's, it's, Ollie, our drummer, is from the UK. So for him, it's uh, been a long time dream to play at Glastonbury. Me too, because I used to live in the UK. And so, well, uh, if you need a, if you need a bass player, I know a guy. <laughs> hey, man, we 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 love to play with bass players, man. We love it. Yeah, love it. Glastonbury is like a magical thing when you see the videos with all the flags and all. It's just and there's a certain magic to that, right? Yeah. And you're telling me, man, I'm so stoked about it. You can see me lighten up. Like I'm super, it, that's like one of the big ones. I'm really excited about that. Man. That's awesome. What's, what's, uh, what's your advice to young musicians, young writers um, that want to do or follow in the footsteps of what you guys are doing? What, what's some of the stuff that you've learned along the way that are super important, creative and also business wise? For sure. Um, well, I can give you like, so for us, like we got really inspired by a group uh, who we actually ended up touring with uh, a few years ago called Rodrigo and Gabriela. Yep, and, I've, I've uh, actually worked, worked, worked with them way back when. <laughs> oh man, dude, they are, they are incredible. And, and we, we toured with them uh, on the Metavolution tour uh, here in Europe. And, you know, they won a Grammy for it. If you don't know them, please check them out. They're super inspiring, amazing people, awesome music. Uh, and, and basically, um, yeah, we... <clears throat> We saw what they'd done and we we learned a little bit, studied and said, hey, you know, like they brought their music directly to the streets in Europe. And and I guess that's always the advice that I would give somebody is, you know, don't ever sit at home thinking that, you know, I'm, I'm so good that someone will find my stuff and take it to the world. It's like, <laughs> you know, if 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 you're not willing to invest in yourself, then nobody's going to invest in you. And, and that's, a, that goes for business too. You know, it's like, uh, I learned that long time ago is like, if, if a business person <clears throat> sits down, like a private equity guy sits down with your financials and says like, this person's done nothing to actually believe in their business. How do I think this business is going to work? Why would they give you a dime? Right? Exactly. Right. And, and I think that's, that goes for art. It goes for whatever you're doing in life. You know, if, People, people gravitate to others who believe so strongly in what they're doing that they're willing to give up everything for it. They're willing to sacrifice for it. And they're also willing to take criticism, uh, which is not easy for musicians. Yeah? And for, for us included, I mean, we, we definitely, you humble yourself when you go out into the street. You stand on people's eye levels and a lot of people just assume that you're there like a glorified beggar, you know? And right. in our case, that's, that was not, never the case. But at the same time, like... Uh, we, we didn't let that get us down. We just said, look, we're here for a reason. We want the right people to find us. And, uh, and it works. It, it does. So I think, that, I think that's the thing is, the I'm sorry. I, I, was say, I think the thing is, too, there's people out there that want to help you. There's people like Music Crowns and these sites that are looking for bands, are looking for great talent. So you have to enable them to be able to find you. And the only way that happens is being out there doing it, doing what you guys do. That's super important. I, yeah, I mean, at this point, I 100% agree. <clears throat> I, I, I think that never, also like your point, which is interesting, is not being afraid, you know, contact like your heroes. Don't be afraid to contact people. And you may never hear an answer, but you never know, man. I mean, we've we've also benefited from that. Just like the same with Rod Gab. That's how we went touring with them was like, we, we, we tried a few times and be like, hey, look, if you ever need an opener, we're here. We really want to do this. We believe in you. And we told them that, like, you're inspiring to us. It would be an honor to share a stage with you. And, and yep. eventually that worked. And, yeah, and, and you know, and also with social okay. media, too, they, I'm just saying, with social media, too, they can, you have access. You can say, hey, check out our, check out our webpage. It's easy. It's not a big deal. To, it's not a big commitment for them. Just go, yeah, I'll check it out. Let's see. Yep. 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 I mean, being as organized, organization is uh, never an easy thing for, for artists, but, you know, if you can be as organized as possible, get yourself a good manager if you can. Uh, that's worth its weight in gold. That's, that's what we did. And it was, uh, it changed our lives for sure. Stephanie, mm -hmm. love you. Uh, but, but yeah, without question, uh, this is really how, uh, how, the, how I, the best advice I could give, you know, is be that's humble, awesome. but at the same time, you know, don't, don't, don't give up. Like uh, the fight. Yeah, like you said, if you got it, people have to see that you believe in yourself before they'll come along with you. And if you're out there making stuff, making stuff happen, which is exactly what you guys have done, are continuing to do, and it's exciting to watch. Thank you. 
Thank you. We do. Uh, we definitely. I mean, we we did like everybody. We fell on our ass in 2020, huh? Yeah. Uh, there's no no question about it, and it hit us pretty hard because our way of life was always moving, 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 and suddenly, bah, it was like frozen. Stop. Yeah. And that 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 messed with us for a little bit, you know. So about a year and a half, we were kind of going through a bit of a roller coaster. We couldn't really find our footing. And, uh, and now we're all over the moon because we stayed with it. We didn't give up when it could have been easy to all start looking for something else. Think, okay, we'll put it on the side. We'll come back when it's ready. We were like, no, we're going to keep waiting for the right opportunities. And we found them every year, even though they weren't glamorous and glorious like they were in the years before, we still found ways to keep going. And I think that that resolve and strength of character that I feel that this entire team shows is the reason why you know we've been whatever you want successful we feel that in some ways we have yeah well that definitely is the reason and people and people pay attention they see what you're doing and people want to help you and that's uh, you know it takes a team we can't we can't do this by ourselves so oh, man. that's true no no problem <laughs> no that's absolutely true actually i mean like it, I, there's an do you know who amanda palmer is yeah yeah so amanda palmer i mean i think she has a super inspiring story and and i and and we learned a lot from her also you know uh, reading her book and studying about her and it was this art of asking not being afraid to ask for what you want not being afraid to ask your fans not being afraid to ask your friends and 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 your supporters and i think that that also that mindset of you know if you try to behave like justin bieber where you're just too big and too and too you know over everybody else right uh, there's only one Justin Bieber, you know, it's, it's, it's not, I mean, you might have that one in a million shot, but there's a lot of talented people out there that just, all you have to do is ask. And, and I think if you, what, what's the worst that can happen? People can say no, huh? but like for yeah. us, we've toured all over the place, just asking people like, Hey, you know, we're coming to London. Who's got a place to stay. And people say, yep, I've got one. And those are the best experiences. <laughs> now we basically yep. turn down yep. hotels whenever we get offered. Like, no, nope, we want to stay with that guy because he's more fun. You know? Yeah. And you know and, what? And then you, you actually, you're getting to connect with the local people. Um, I, I love the same thing. Like I, I have friends in London I stay with. That she lives in a nice little residential neighborhood. I'm like, that's the best experience. I've stayed in hotels my entire life. It's nice to be able to wake up and her cat's there and we're hanging out. We can walk down yeah. to the pub and have a beer. It's awesome. But it is. Yeah, that's the that's the the beauty and the danger of London life, you know. Just walk <laughs> exactly. down to the pub, you know, and then you're like, "Wait, I, how can I become Jocko if I'm always at the pub?" <laughs> it's a challenge, yeah. Hey, um how can Amen. people find you on how can people find you online and also your your videos? Yeah, so um you can find us pretty much anywhere with the name The Trouble Notes, three words. Uh social media, of course, we're on all of it, even TikTok. I may look old, but I'm young at heart. <laughs> uh and uh and beyond that uh yeah like uh music is on all of i mean spotify we're on everything all the trouble notes and we do have a patreon uh, we have a really beautiful community on patreon of direct supporters uh so if awesome. you fall into our world and you you know what i really want to become uh what we call a troublemaker which is an uh somebody that's really near and dear to us and i'm telling you like we know all of our patrons pretty much by name we we communicate a lot <laughs> Uh, and it's the yeah, it's the the way for us. So. Yeah, that's amazing. And also, also look for um, your NFTs on aficionados. Um, I think my understanding is we're launching on February seventh, so that's a very exciting. It's going to be a very exciting platform for everybody, and it's 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 created by creators for creators. That's right. Yeah, no, seventh no, of seventh uh, of February is indeed the launch date uh, as of now. Um, I, I don't I anticipate that that will change. Um, and indeed, uh, yeah, you know, check, take a look at our catalog, but there's a lot of other guys. I know a few other incredible musicians who are putting stuff up there. You're going to be putting stuff up, Daryl. So, uh, yeah, take a poke around. If you don't know anything about NFTs, it's the best time to just kind of get introduced to the NFT world, what everybody's doing. Maybe you even think to yourself, Hey, I've got a creative idea and, uh, it's real easy to get in touch with the guys and, and list your NFTs on the marketplace. Yep, it, it's the future. It's the future for artists, for, for funding, for sure. I hope so, homie. I really yeah, do. Absolutely. I believe in it. I'm an idealist when it comes to NFTs. I really am. Yeah, so, I, it's, 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 it's exciting. It's an exciting space and lots of, lots of potential. Um, thank you so much for joining me, Bennett. I appreciate it. I'm going to definitely be following what you guys do. Um, I'd love to see some videos from you playing the festivals. Yes, man. I will be happy to keep in touch. And when you're over here, when you're over this way, if you find your way anywhere near Germany, UK, wherever, please get in touch. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm uh, coming over actually. Yeah, I'm coming over yeah, I'm coming pretty soon. We, we, did, we just announced the uh, Tyson Fury white fight. No way. And that's going to be up in London. So that's that's coming up. <laughs> God, you're, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're you're going to the Tyson Fury fight. Yeah, I'm going to fight photograph it. So I do hope you know that like the the drummer is a massive fan, yeah. So oh, Ollie, okay. Ollie, Ollie will he'll lose his his marbles when he finds this out. Yeah, I'm going to tell him. Yeah, I shot the, I shot the last the, the last uh, Fury uh, Wilder fight in Las Vegas. No way, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be part of my NF, that's part of my NFTs. <laughs> I might have a couple buyers on this side, yeah. So I'll I'll cool. get you. I'll make you some business, bro. <laughs> all right, awesome. Hey, man, have a great day and nice talking with you. I'll put your links up and uh, we'll get all your information on the on the release for the podcast. And uh, I'll also put your links on the video. Appreciate you, Daryl. Thanks a lot, man. Good luck to you, okay? Hope yeah, to, you too. Hope to see you on this side of the, the Atlantic, bro. Uh, you will soon. All right, man. Come on, man. Have all a great right, day. Take care, you Ciao. too. Ciao. It matters with Daryl Craig Harris. Thanks for joining us and catch you next time.